Hello friends, I am Swapna Shetty. In this video, we will be able to classify different types of servlets and differentiate between get and post and understand how servlets collaborate with each other. So servlets are divided into two categories, namely protocol independent servlets and protocol dependent servlets. So our servlet is said to be protocol independent if it extends generic servlet. And our servlet is said to be protocol dependent if it extends HTTP servlet. So it is always best to create a protocol dependent servlet. So basically servlet is an interface which is located in Java X dot servlet package within which we have got generic servlet as the child class of implementation class of servlet and under generic servlets in a sub package called HTTP we have got HTTP servlet. So if we look at the skeleton structure of the protocol dependent servlets so this is the basic we have public class my servlet which is extending HTTP servlet under which we have got init method destroy method and the service protected void service method protected void do get method so this is the basic skeleton structure of a servlet which is extending HTTP servlet and order of method calls so first is a servlet engine always implicitly or explicitly calls init method that is parameterized with servlet config that is servlet engine calls parameterized init method parameterized init methods by default calls the default init method then servlet engine calls public service with uh, parameters like servlet request and servlet response method then protected service with HTTP servlet request and HTTP servlet response method will be called then do get or do post will be called that is public service method first converts the normal objects to HTTP compatible objects then it calls protected service method which recognizes what kind of incoming HTTP request is coming that is either get request or post request then it calls do get or do post methods accordingly so from the web client request can come to the web server in any of the two ways that is either get or post so these are known as HTTP request methods so coming to the differences between get and post get is a default request method whereas post we need to explicitly mention get is meant for getting data from server but not for posting data to server for database modifications whereas post is meant for posting data to server for database modifications get has got a query string whereas post doesn't have a query string in a query string get will pass the sensitive information also that is the input parameters which are entered by the user so sensitive informations like passwords should not be sent using get method whereas with post method sensitive information can be passed and in get method limited data can be transferred from client to server but using post there is no limit next is servlet collaboration so one servlet assisting another servlet in processing a client request is nothing but servlet collaboration this can be done in two ways either by sharing data or by sharing control so to understand what is sharing data and what is sharing control let us take an example of a bank which has got three officers like cashier officer and one is and the other one is loans officer first customer has come to the bank to the cashier for money deposit so this is a simple request so cashier doesn't need help of other officers to process this request and sends the response back to the client whereas customer 2 has come for loan payment to the cashier this is not a simple request but slightly complex cashier here indirectly takes the help of loans officer by using the hard copy of loan details 
which contains the loan amount, loan account, and etc. of all the customers of the bank. So he doesn't directly talk to the loans officers, but he will take the help of a hard copy. Customer 3 has approached a bank for DD request. So it is a complex request. Here the involvement of other officers is required. So servlets in this bank, all these officer, loans officer and cashier are nothing but servlets. So servlets collaborate with one another in two ways. That is either by sharing data, that is loan payment example, or by sharing control, that is DD issuance example. So in the first case, only one servlet will actually be involved in processing the client request. The other servlet shares data and therefore the first servlet could finish the job. In the second case, more than one servlet directly participates in processing the client request. Now, how does a servlet share data with other servlet? That is through attribute concept. An attribute is nothing but it's a name value pair of representation of a data item. So for this servlet API provides methods to deal with attributes like set attribute, which is used to store a particular data item in a given scope and get attribute retrieves the data item stored and returns the same with that name if no attribute exists this method returns null and remove attribute is used to remove a data item so scopes of an attribute could be either request session or application so to understand what is application we need to know what is servlet context it basically it's an interface which belongs to java x dot servlet package and for a servlet, number of config objects is one, and number of request and response objects varies depending on the client requests. But servlet object, servlet context object is an interface, and it is one per application. And it is created as soon as the web application is deployed. So every servlet in an application can share this unique servlet context object. So we basically get this servlet context object using config.get servlet context method if parameterized init method is used. If default init method is used, no need of using this config object. We can simply say get servlet context method in order to retrieve servlet context object. So if a data item is shared in servlet context object, then it is said to be in application scope. So let us understand how do servlets share data using attribute concept. For example, let's say we have got source servlet, which is extending HTTP servlet. And in the doGet method, this use we need to create a servlet context object. And using set attribute method, I've shared a data item with the name called name and the value called the Kiran. So then I'm printing welcome to first servlet and giving a link to the target servlet. So when I click get name, the control goes to this target servlet. And in the target servlet, I'm just getting the attribute, value of the attribute name and printing the value in the second servlet. So let's execute and check. Run on server. So welcome to first servlet and when I click get name, it is going to the second servlet and printing the value of the attribute. So this is how servlet, so servlet and target servlet communicated each other by sharing the values with attribute concept. Next is request dispatching. This is another servlet collaboration method where servlet share control. That is, one servlet delegating request processing duty to another servlet is known as request dispatching. So we need servlet context object in order to get retrieve request, request dispatcher object by calling get request dispatcher method on servlet context object. So basically, during request dispatching, control is shared between servlets within one request response cycle. So how do we get request dispatcher is first we need to get servlet context object and call get request dispatcher method by passing the target servlet name or JSP name 
and then calling forward or include methods. So what is the difference between forward and include? In forward method, the client request first it requests the request is sent to this first servlet, and when a forward method is encountered, the control goes to servlet 2 there the response is generated and servlet 2 directly passes the response back to the browser that is to the client whereas in forward in include method first the request is sent to servlet 1 when an include method is encountered the request the control went to servlet 2 and the response of servlet 2 is added is included in the response of servlet 1 and servlet 1 finally sends response back to the client. So let's see an example of request dispatching. So first I need to take an input from the serv from the user that is to ask a uh, username and password to the user. That is here we are validating the user. If the user is entering the password correctly then he is supposed to go to the other servlet. If the user has not entered the password correctly he stays back in the same HTML page. So for that this is the HTML page with form one username and one password and one submit button. So when a user clicks on submit the control goes to the first servlet. And in the first servlet, we are reading the username and password and creating servlet context object. And if the password is equals to educators, then we are creating request dispatcher method by passing the second servlet name. And then we are forwarding the request to the second server. If the user doesn't enter the password correctly, then we are printing invalid user and we are including the response of first servlet within the HTML page and displaying the HTML page back to the user. So let's see in index.html page run on server. So here Shetty is the username and password is educators. So when I click on submit, it is going to the second servlet and printing welcome user. If the password is wrong, that is I have entered a wrong password and entered submit, it is giving invalid user and staying back and the control is going to the index page. So this is how servlets can share the control. So that's all with the session. Thank you.